Welcome back to Mouster House Campers folks. This is your camper nerd Anthony Valentine. For my regular subscribers you're going to notice a bit of a difference to my video today. After investing in a new microphone and one of these bad boys. So the first part of my video is going to be a circular flyover. Hopefully the roof's clean on this. We're soon going to find out. Then followed by my normal in-depth review and then we're going to do a flyover driving shot and then hopefully a small wrap up chat don't forget to hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified of any new videos let's get on to that normal in-depth review So, today's review, folks, is a 2003 Compass Calypso on the T4 2.5 turbo diesel VW chassis. I'll just do a quick walk round. The Calypso is a two berth with two opposing bench seats that makes into two single beds or one large double bed. It's one of the compact mid-range motorhomes. So you've still got the height and all the facilities and amenities, but also you've got that small footprint to park at the side of the road or in a supermarket car park. So, a shade under three metres tall, a shade under six metres long, and just over two metres wide. So, a good small two berth motorhome on the bomb proof T4 chassis. This has got the 2.5 88 brake horsepower TDI Audi engine, renowned for being bulletproof. Of the hundreds of videos and that I've reviewed, I've never done a T5 yet, as I tend to like the old T4s, what I call good thready flintstone mechanics, good old-fashioned engineering, no DPFs, no common rail diesel, fuel filters, etc. Not too many electronics. Yes, just good old-fashioned engineering. 
The early T5s did suffer from a lot of teething problems. They didn't tend to wind it out till they got to nearer to 2009, 2010. So most people either stick with a late T4, which is a future classic in the waiting, or jump straight through to a 2010 onwards T5. That's just my opinion. I'm sure comments below will have the early T5 owners saying otherwise. But there's a reason why I've never sold a T5 in my business up to now. So yes, the good old Compass Calypso. Compass is part of the Explorer group. Still going strong in County Durham near Newcastle since 1964 so parts are readily available the largest leisure company in the UK which are now incidentally owned by Hymer let's have a look under the bonnet or the hood as some of our audience will no doubt pick me up on. Oil and filter that engine, a timing belt as necessary, it'll last you a lifetime. Which proves it, this is a 2003 and so after 13 MOTs it's only been failed twice and that was on tyres one year and wiper blades another year not even any advisories can you imagine after all those years and all those checks to keep sailing through an MOT very strict the MOTs in the United Kingdom at the moment so it's testament to VW's engineering of that era So the Compass Calypso comes with a rear ladder, somebody's added an extra storage locker box on the back and they've put it on the two Fiorma bike rack, so obviously that could be removed very straightforward and used for bikes. So you've got the locker in here, let's see if we can get the keys and show you. So we've got the locker in there for the Fetford cassette toilet. We had a 50-50 chance of getting the correct key, and lo and behold, so there you have the Fetford cassette toilet. Just push this here, that pulls out. So that's the waste tank, as well as the inlet for the flush. We've got mains hook up here, if you're parked up. So by having the mains hook up, you'll be able to charge the leisure battery, work all the lighting and electrics inside off the mains as well as keeping that fridge super cold. Reversing lights here, we've got an outside 12 volts socket, so that's an outlet for 12 volts. That's the Truma exhaust, so that's the cover and that's for heating the hot water on gas if you're wild camping. Fresh water cap. So yes, on these new videos, I'll be giving you some tips of my many years experience in the industry. Always wise to look underneath, have a good prod, make sure there's no holes, no rust, as you can see on this late T5, or T4 rather, that's not the case. Don't be frightened of bending down, having a good look from side to side, underneath. One thing I'm always weary of is buying a vehicle if it's been at the seaside or near the sea for any length of time. Due to the salt air and the corrosion that can provide. So if you check the logbook, check how long it's been living at the seaside. If it has been, just check underneath for any rust or corrosion. Just a very good useful tip.
look at this folks no electric windows good old-fashioned wind-up hopefully you appreciated the flyover by Mr Drone here I'll be doing many more please keep the comments coming underneath let's have a look into the driver's seating area Beautiful matching upholstery and armrests. Five speed manual gearbox. And what have we got here? Are you old enough to know what this flat means? Oh, yes, it's a cassette. That's a good indication folks, it's never been smoked in. The last owner's gone to the detail of stitching a steering wheel protector. This particular one has covered 47,000 miles. Beautiful. All the original mats. Well, let's have a look inside. Let's pop some lighting on. So we've got the control panel here. You can operate the rear electrics on the leisure part by using the leisure battery or the vehicle battery. Not very good wise idea to use the vehicle battery because of course if you use that and the battery won't fly you wouldn't be able to start the engine. So always go to the leisure battery, only use that in an emergency. And that's for the water pump, on ancillaries, lights. So you've got the extra trimmer control panel, so we switch this on here, green light comes on, that's clicked on now, that is going to operate the water on gas if you was wild camping. If you was plugged into the mains, then you've got the hot water on the mains, 240. The one next to it is the inside heating, so you've got the heater there that is gas operated, that's a Trumatic, but you can also, when you're plugged into the mains, override it, switch it on, and you can have 500 watts, 1000 or 2000. Reading lights, roof lights, if we can get the camera angle correctly, Uh, kitchen light We should have bathroom lights. Yes Well, we're in the bathroom. We'll have a quick peep So you've got the original compass floor mat over the shower tray You've got the Fetford compact toilet You've got the flush operation there toilet hole holder and you've got the display so that tells you that the storage cartridge is empty and green to go mirror and storage the all-important sink which the taps double up so you've got the hot and cold water and you just pull that and that's your shower all compact and well designed 
blackout blinds, as well as fly nets. So come into the kitchen area, you've got the three burner gas hob. So I've just lit one there. Just a note, you're always looking for a blue flame, folks. Anything other than a blue flame suggests that it needs a service or a clean at the very least. Similarly with the grill, the oven, we'll see if we can operate that, you can see nice blue flame, anything other than a blue flame, switch off, give it a clean, if it's still not a blue flame, take it in for servicing. Three way fridge, so these two switches can be permanently left in the on position, so this one is for the 12 volts, so the fridge will operate, keep it cold when you're driving, this one will light up when you're on mains, and you've got the thermostat there for the electric part of the fridge. You've also got a separate thermostat for the gas part. So another piece of advice here. So we're just going to put the sparker on. We push it down and over to the gas. When it stops sparking, that means that the pilot is taken. We are still going to be holding down the gas pilot. About five seconds, release. That means the pilot lighter's stayed open as the sparker is not just one important piece of information that a lot of people think once it's sparked they switch it off it's a safety device so that should be stayed in the on position we'll demonstrate a gust of wind so if it had a gust of wind in the night it would blow out the pilot light and it would still be trickle trickling a very small amount of gas of course you've got safety underneath you've it's aired out, you've got the ventilation, but everything's thought of to be doubly safe. So all you do, we're going to demonstrate now a gust of wind blowing the gas out. So we'll switch the gas off and look at that, it started sparking again. So if it had a gust of wind, it blown out, the spark would automatically ignite the pilot again. So we'll just demonstrate that by switching the gas back on. little freezer compartment so that's where the pilot is you can just about see it's very tricky but there's the pilot light on another piece of advice you have two little holes here for the catch here so we're just going to put it in normally you can just close it there and that's fine it's got magnets and that's not going anywhere, it's fairly solid even when you're driving but to be doubly sure you can click that into that position when it's fully closed or if you're storing it for any amount of time, it goes with any house appliance if you had a fridge at home which was switched on, it would get a bit smelly and mouldy so all we do is just put it on the little first latch that leaves a little gap there and that will stop that problem and keep it aired so the kitchen sink we take the top off and that is, is an extra workspace so we've got the hot and cold mixer tap and compass certainly put lots of storage space into this small less than six meters long design Place there for all your crockery, pots, dishes, plates. Again, blackout blinds and fly nets to every windscreen. Up here we've got a blackout blind and we've got fly nets there, you can see. Outside light more cupboard space more space above your seats so yes this is the small compact two opposing small bench seats 
So you can pull the, both the seats there, will go forward. We have bed extenders here. You just pull those out. Those click into two little grooves there. So then that goes that way. That will go over to there and that will provide two nice sized single beds. But of course you've got the facility, the option that these two sofas will come together, meet in the middle and create one large double bed. The trim is second to none on a compass. Explorer know what they're doing by now. Nicely fitted curtains that will go all the way around the cab area so it's still utilising the cab area at night. At the front you've got the facilities and the fixings for a mains electricity as well as for the aerial and a 12 volt supply. This is an industry standard on the leisure, it's a 12 volt supply, you can buy a plug and a converter there. That particular one as you can see is lit up and the last owner has had a, a cigarette lighter there so it could control whatever they were last in there, whether that was a gadget or a TV. As you can see there, that's lit up. Again, lots of cupboard space above the driver and passenger. Easy opening windows that all open fully and can lock on this latch here. So that's holding the window open. We'll just close that down. Again, one of the common mistakes that motorhome people do, if they're not using it for any while, can leave it standing. I say I've talk, talked a little bit about the fridge and keeping the air inside the fridge circulating. That goes for the inside, because we don't want any condensation. So a lot of the time, if you're in storage, you can just put it on this first little latch in the middle and that just creates some condensation three uh, and ventilation. So we'll just close that fully if you're traveling. Fully fitted compass carpets, kind of bit of, I think that's a bit of me coming out of the field. So that just wants a quick wipe over. But yeah, fully fitted on clips and button clips. And that will just give you the you can see underneath there the lino floor, hard floor. The Trumatic heater. So we push it over to number 10, hold it in, spark the igniter. That is actually lit, but it's very hard to see on the pilot. And that will light the heater by gas. You can actually also use the central heating facility. So you've got automatic on the flame and manual. You might be picking up that noise on the microphone and there's the thermostat and then that will blow the heater air through here and also to inside the shower room. So we just switched off the central heating. Again under storage area Yes, very nice folks. Compass certainly know what they're doing. So I would like to take this opportunity to just to warn you folks about some of the scams that are going on in the internet at the moment. If a vehicle or a camper van in particularly is advertised too cheap, too good to be true, it normally is. What generally has been happening in the industry at the moment that's been advertised on Auto Trader, eBay in particular, are vehicles are non existent. Old adverts have been copied and pasted, have been displayed for advertising purposes. There is no vehicle, it does not exist. You'll notice there's no phone number, all the communication and contact is by email, and there'll be normally a generic excuse that, oh, it's abroad and if you pay a deposit then we'll ship it to you 
which is another word for it's a scam. So if it's too good to be true, it normally is. So just be careful out there, folks. Always speak to somebody. Be careful with your money. Ask to view it. Pull the bluff. Do not pay any deposits without viewing a vehicle unless you've spoken to the person and you've had any past history. If in doubt, even if you've spoke to a person, Google their phone number and this will show you if they've advertised any other vehicles, if they're pretending or intimidating a private owner when they're actually a dealer. Not that there's anything wrong with buying a dealer, but if a dealer's pretending to be a private, then alarm bells start to ring. So just be careful folks. I'll just wrap up this part of the video now with a slow walk round again. And the next part of our video format will be flyover with driving it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You'll be notified of any new videos. I will be doing plenty of new videos in the forthcoming weeks. Keep your comments coming in. Any ideas will be more than welcome. So just to wrap up of this review of a 2003 Compass Calypso on the VW T4 2.5 turbo diesel chassis. I hope you enjoy the flyover. So over to Mr. Drone and I'll catch you later. So thanks again for watching my video today folks, hopefully my regular subscribers have noticed a difference and my new subscribers can click that subscribe button and you'll be notified of any new videos. Hopefully it's made a big difference using this bad boy and I will welcome any comments in the section below. Good night, bye for now folks.